632 on Wednesday, November 1st, already November 1st, 2017, uh, and I want to welcome everyone to the regular meeting of the Larksburg City Council. Did we have a roll call, please? Your mic. Oh, your Oops, mic. Sorry. sorry about that. Is that better? Could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Two. Here. Councilmember Way. Here. Councilmember Morrison. Here. Councilmember Hilmer. Here. Mayor Harrell. Here. So for those who are able, could you please stand and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. Good flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So that will take us to item number two, presentations and proclamations. I see that we have none tonight. Uh, so we'll move to agenda item number three, which is public comment, which is only for matters that are not listed on the agenda. This is a time for members of the public to address the city council regarding items that are not on the agenda or that are listed as part of the consent calendar. Please approach the podium, state your name and where you live. Uh, individuals have three minutes to speak and five minutes if representing a group. The council is not permitted to take action on any matters uh, that are not on the agenda. We may engage in limited discussion, but uh, we will refer to a matter to the agenda if it can be demonstrate, demonstrated to be of an emergency nature. Is there anyone from the public who would like to take advantage of this opportunity to make a public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to agenda, agenda item number four, approval of the consent calendar. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, can you just say number three? Uh, yes, did you want to make a comment during the public comment period? Please, you're right on time. Go ahead. And she, she might be interested in you pulling a consent item. You might want to clarify. Oh, is that? Are you interested in pulling a consent item? Is that why you're here? Because we can do that. Are you interested in pulling an item that is currently on the consent calendar off the consent calendar so we can consider it? And which item is that? And I'm sorry, what? Which item is that? Uh, the serenity apartments. So that's item number 4.4, .4, I believe. I think it's 4.4 .4 on our, our list. So unless there is an objection, um, we'll, uh, we'll pull that and consider it. Um, can we uh, approve the consent calendar with that matter accepted? I'll make that motion. Second. 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 Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, with the exception of removing 4.4, .4, uh, which we will consider public hearing, um, the consent calendar is approved. And that brings us then to agenda item number five, which is city manager's oral report. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and council members. Um, first off, I wanted to note that we, our public work staff is out doing some uh, restriping and median cleanups around town. We had a few folks wonder why we were uh, restriping on Bon Air, given we're about to do a lot of work on Bon Air, but it had reached a point the lines were so faded we were we had safety concerns, so uh, we went ahead and did some restriping to make sure that Bonaire is safe. Uh, even though, as you know, we're going to be more and more construction corridor uh, in the Larkspur part of Bonaire here shortly. So um, if you get any inquiries, that's what is happening there. Um, we are expecting our rains to start here shortly. Um, we have rain in the forecast for the weekend. We've been working on preparing our storm drains. We remind everyone to please check your property, make sure your gutters and, and uh, any drains you have on your property are clear. We also wanted to remind folks in our flatland area that uh, king tide season will be upon us soon in combination with the rains, and that's often the time when our storm drains struggle to deal with uh, water. So. Uh, we ask folks to be patient, observant. We'll have signs up if we run into any problems over the next two months as we deal with that situation. Um, other than that, uh, staff is still busy at work doing uh, a lot of prep for the, for the winter months. And um, 
One of the most notable things I want to report out to the council is we continue to work on our fire consolidation with Corte Madera. As reported to you at the last meeting, uh, we've run into some challenges navigating some new legislation and some new legal concerns that have emerged at CalPERS. Um, we are working diligently through them and we are also working on uh, plans to make sure that from an operational standpoint we are the Central Marine Fire Department or Fire Authority on uh, January 1st of, of this year. Um, it may take a little longer to dot every I and cross every T in a way that Sacramento is happy with, but we will make sure that um, we are a, a functioning entity uh, for the purpose of delivering service to the community on January 1. And in fact, as the council knows, for the most part, we're functioning that way uh, today. Uh, I wanna assure the council and the community that uh, discussions are going on between all of the agencies in Marin about fire prevention and prepare preparedness, um, how best to communicate our uh, practices and resources out to the uh, community. We're working on that. What we want to avoid is having 12 different resources. We want to try to have more centralized resources where folks can collect all the information they need uh, in one location. And that reflects the fact that um, fire prevention is a coordinated effort between the 11 cities and the county and we want to reflect that in the information that we're putting out. Um, and then also wanted to uh, make sure that the uh, council and the public are aware that uh, in the months of November and December with the holiday season upon us, there are periodic uh, federal holidays uh, as well as uh, some closures that we observe and we encourage the public to check our website and the signs in City Hall so they're aware of closures. We will be closed for Veterans Day. That's our next uh, closure, which is a week from Friday. Uh, with that, Mr. Mayor, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, thanks very much. Any uh, questions or comments from the council on the city manager's report? Go ahead, please. Hey, Dan, do you know if Madrone Canyon has a neighborhood response team all organized? They, they do. Oh, good. I was going to call Tom. Good. That's all I want to know. They're in the process of the, at the lower Madrone Canyon, but not upper. Lower Madrone Canyon. Okay. But I can fill you in on that. Okay, anything else from the council? For the city manager? Just a question about the storm drains. That I, you may have seen it in the paper today, but there was a, something about um, Palm Hill and Elm Avenue and all the work that's been done up there. Most of those storm drains are covered over now because of the work um, so that they cannot get debris into them like we're supposed to do. Um, is there going to be follow ups to make sure that those are opened before the weekend storms? Because I read it's going to be a pretty significant storm. Maybe we'll I may check. have to ask Polly Worcester. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not aware we've been closing and covering storm They cover, drains, so. cover them up so they don't get debris so in there. But. Yes, good evening. Um, so the work that's taking place up in that area now is a combination of uh, private contractors and utilities. Um, all of those projects are being monitored by a public works inspector, and part of that routine inspection is to visit sites before anticipated rain events. Um, the storm drains are covered ordinarily so that debris doesn't get into the storm drains and then depending on the severity of the storm drain event that's coming, um, the areas in front of the storm drains are cleaned out and there are overflow mechanisms on most of those devices so that they let the heavy rains in. Um, they're designed so that they stop uh, the initial flush that has all the dirt from getting into the catch basin, but all of those covers on those catch basins are designed to let the heavier flows into the structures. Thanks for that. Yeah. Okay, anything else from the council? Uh, seeing nothing, let's move on to agenda item number six, which is council members' oral reports and uh, comments. And we'll start uh, over here. Council Member Chu. Yeah, just very briefly. Uh, I was contacted by a member of the board for the Central Marine Sanitation Agency. And, uh, you know, we had that discussion a couple weeks ago where we were looking at the amending the, uh, you know, the, the agreement, the, the uh, JPA agreement, but uh, they were interested in knowing what direction that we're going to take on, you know, whether we're going to stay or not stay as a part of that, um, you know, joint venture um, since LAFCO had uh, kind of inferred that the board should be reorganized, which was in a suggestion that Larkspur might not be a board member. 
So um, I don't know if we have anything we can report out to them in terms of when that might get on our calendar. Do you want me to respond? Please do. The council took an official position that you were not going to answer that question, but rather you asked the member agencies of CMSA who collect sewer to jointly come up with a proposal for you to respond to. Um, so that was your response to the LAFCA suggestion. It's our understanding that as part of the CMSA's process to review its joint powers agreement, there will be a discussion of what the board composition would be. So I would anticipate from that process, you will be given something to react or respond to. Um, LAFCA was not compelling LAFCA, uh, compelling Larkspur to be the agency to propose a solution to the issue. Hmm. Yeah, but it kind of, the way I remember, we kind of left it was that we would at least agendize it to have a discussion specifically about what LAFCO was proposing as opposed to going outside the boundaries of what was on the agenda, which was the specific amendments to the agreement. Oh, no, I'm, I apologize. Uh, you did agendize the LAFCO item. Uh, I, I, was, I don't have the date in front of me. I'd say it was about four or five months ago. And at that time, you took the position that since LAFCO hadn't proposed what the new board composition should be, that you would like to see the member agencies of CMSA who do sewer collection propose a new board composition that you could respond and react to. Um, and that was the letter that you sent to LAFCA. You authorized the mayor. So I can pull that out and circulate it to the council. Yeah, I think at this point, um, you know, I'm, I'm a little more clear on, you know, what, what it was going back to the four or five months ago. You know, um, in, in effect, I guess we, I can just follow up and tell them that and refer back to the letter then. I'd be happy. I'll send, like I said, I'll send a copy. I'll point you. It's on our website. I'll point you to where it is, and you can direct whomever to take a look at that. Okay, thank you. Might, might be helpful to share that with all of us uh, in case we get those yeah. calls, too. Yes, Councilmember Homer. Just a, a clarifying, through the mayor, just a clarifying question. Was this Ross Valley Sanitation District that maybe asked you this? Yes. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Yeah. Okay. Councilmember Boyd. Um, disaster preparedness continues to be on everybody's highlight of everybody's mind lately. Um, the citizen committee that I co-chair with Bob Ravazio, um, the uh, Twin Cities Disaster Preparedness Committee hasn't met um, since the uh, firestorms, but we will be meeting next Monday. Uh, and that, but I wanted to alert everybody that the NRG, the Neighborhood Response Group team, has really been reaching out to a lot of Larkspur residents and a lot of. Um, Corte Madero residents, and this weekend on the 5th, I don't know if your neighborhood's participating, but it is the semi-annual drills, and I think we'll have eight or nine neighborhoods between the two towns drilling uh, from 9 to 12. And anybody's welcome to go. I know at Larry's neighborhood they've done um, a lot in the last several years. Um, and there, this, organ this um, group meets on the second Monday of the month from 9 to 10 at CMPA. And if anybody's listening who wants to come, it's a citizen-driven committee, and they're welcome to come. Uh, there's no um, membership requirement, just participation and interest. Okay. Anything else? Council Member Helmer. Uh, a summary report of the SMART board meeting today. Uh, interesting in that it... Uh, and, and I would uh, ask members of the public and the council to refer to the, to the SMART website, www.sonomamarintrain.org, for uh, all the presentations that were made there online. Uh, discussion today of impacts of the, the, uh, the fires on uh, SMART and how SMART responded, uh, as well as uh, larger impacts related to both. Uh, SMART made a report today that they are, the ridership projections they, uh, for the entire system have been met. The revenue projections <clears throat> are close to being met, including <clears throat> all the free uh, service that was provided at the beginning, at opening and after the fire. So they're hitting revenue projections, with, including all those free trips. This is, and most importantly, this is all happening without the Larkspur extension in place. So I just wanted to state that uh, 
it's trending toward high use. A success story. So I look forward to giving you more information. Uh, maybe we can agendize an item to where we can get into more detail. I think some of the issues facing uh, the system and the opportunities, especially with respect to use of the real estate, are very interesting. Thank you. Would that be an opportunity for somebody, a representative from Spark, to come and make a short presentation? Sure. That might be helpful. I think that would um, that answer questions that the community has as well. So that'd be great. Councilmember Morrison. Nothing. I'll just mention very briefly, uh, since I've been uh, away from council meetings for a little bit, one of the reasons for one of those meetings was uh, my attendance at a two-day um, uh, symposium in Sacramento put on by the California Independent System Operator, Cal ISO, um, which is the entity that uh, administers the, uh, the California electrical grid. Um, I was up there uh, as a representative of MCE and therefore derivatively of the city of Larkspur. Uh, it was a very interesting uh, symposium uh, with a great deal of focus on changes uh, in the grid that we'll see over coming years. Um, proposals that have been circulating around to integrate the California grid with uh, other western states um, which uh, could provide some significant benefits to us here in California. Uh, but more importantly, to me at least, um, was the very positive reporting uh, that occurred from a variety of the speakers on the success of renewable energy within the state of California and across the West. Um, there were a lot of concerns uh, expressed by many people over the years as the amount of renewables increased. Uh, and when I say renewables, I mean primarily large wind and solar generation facilities. Um, a lot of concerns, uh, particularly expressed within the utility community, about the reliability of those kinds of resources and growing dependence upon renewable energy within the state. And the good news that came out of the symposium is that um, the, the reliability of renewables is every bit as robust uh, as the reliability of conventional energy generation, including uh, natural gas. Uh, it's a little trickier to manage, um, but with um, good algorithms and computer power, uh, it can be done uh, quite successfully. So I think we'll continue to see the growth of renewable energy throughout the state of California. That's good news for MCE and I think good news for uh, the city of Larkspur, which as you recall, uh, the city council approved uh, the city joining um, uh, MCE's uh, deep green uh, program some months ago. So uh, we're on track to a renewable energy future in the state of California and that's uh, very heartwarming. So that's, uh, that's my report. Uh, with that, uh, maybe we can go back to the one item that was pulled off of the consent calendar, and that would be item uh, number 4.4, .4, and if we could have a report from the city manager on that uh, agenda item. I'm going to turn it over to the planning director. That's fine. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Mayor and members of the city council, uh, this is a... Item, a precise plan amendment and design review uh, for a um, uh, development of new parking garages uh, to replace carports at the Serenity uh, Apartments, um, part of the Lincoln Village Residential Development. The council is, uh, this item has been put on as a, as a consent item for the council to waive second reading and adopt uh, the ordinance 1024 amending the number and configuration of parking spaces and uh, that were initially approved under the precise development plan for phase one of the Lincoln Village um, uh, residential uh, um, complex under ordinance number 563. Uh, this includes some associated building and site modifications. Um, this uh, item was first heard by the commission on September 26. Uh, the commission heard public testimony and ultimately voted to recommend approval to the city council. Uh, the council heard this item on October 18th. Again, heard testimony, uh, discussed the matter, and ultimately voted to waive first reading and to move to adopt uh, the ordinance at tonight's meeting. Uh, so I'm just here to answer any questions that come up um, as a result of uh, any presentation or discussion. Okay, any questions from the council for the planning director? Um, seeing none, I guess we can hear from the public. 
please approach the podium and state your name and where you live, please. This is good, by the way. <laughs> um, my name is um, Heather Dunmire, and I'm a Larkspur Court resident, so therefore a Larkspur resident. Um, uh, I'm going to take that off. <laughs> um, They're eliminating uh, valuable parking spaces for expensive garages. Um, I'm asking you to delay your approval till uh, a parking study could be done, or just me to look further onto it. But uh, what I've discovered is um, Larkspur uh, Building Code uh, does not follow the uh, California Building Code or the Marin County Building Code for the um, number of um, parking spaces per unit. Um, Larkspur has one bedroom, uh, that's one parking space per unit, and then uh, the California Building Code and the Marin County Building Code has um, uh, 1.5. And Larkspur has, two, for the two bedroom, 1.5 parking spaces per unit. And the California and the Marin County Building Code has, uh, for the two bedroom, two points. So therefore, it's really jumping the amount that is required uh, over and above the 499 that they're saying that they're supposed to have. Um, and then the guest parking is, it seems to be the same for Larkspur, Marin County, and California. Um, but Larkspur Code stipulates that the guest parking should be within 200 feet of the building it serves, and there are a few buildings on this property that um, would not have available guest parkers, parking spaces available for them. Um, so I'm wondering what uh, the Larkspur Building Code follow. Do they follow the California? or the Moon County, or just their own on the parking spaces, because I've looked around other towns and cities, and they're following the California Building Code. Um, and the 49 garages are to be paid for by the tenants who can afford these garages. And for the ones that can't, they will take up the limited few guest parking. And this doesn't make it affordable to residents who are already paying a lot for these apartments, really a lot. <laughs> in addition to paying pet rent and paying for other amenities, I mean, separate from their rent. Um, so Serenity is asking all these renters, do they want to pay more per month to have a garage and storage? If there are renters that want storage, then there are tons of available, uh, far less expensive storage places in Marin, East Bay, San Francisco, the whole Bay Area. So, um, I think that was it on my, what I was saying. So they're taking away, it really would be a, a loss of uh, 49 parking spaces plus the 17 that they're already claiming in this proposed parking. Um, so it would be a total of 66 parking spaces from the existing amount. Um, so please, you know, really try to make it affordable for the renters here. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, can the planning director respond to this issue about compliance with county and state um, requirements? Um, yeah, the um, the city does not follow the Marin County Building Code. Um, the city does uh, has incorporated the California Building Code, um, and I don't know if the Marin County Building Code building code itself as opposed to zoning code establishes a different standard but the the city does follow the uh, California building code we've had the project reviewed by the um, building official and the fire department as well um, and uh, specifically on this issue is not the building officials not cited any a uh, specific uh, parking requirement that's violated, and um, it certainly is compliant with our zoning ordinance going back many years. As, as we've stated, the project does meet the minimum building requirement. 
um, excuse me, minimum parking requirement for multiple family dwellings in terms of the total overall numbers. Um, and it's the zoning requirement that really dictates the, um, the parking uh, required for sites as opposed to the building code. Um, we are aware too the state of California is actually reducing um, parking requirements. It's that depends on certain locations and uh, various factors, but certainly parking is um, becoming less of a standard under California state law. So that's the response in terms of that particular issue. Okay. Any any questions from the council? Yes, yeah. Councilmember Chu. Yeah, I have a two-part question. First part for the planning director. Um, this this project, as as I remember, was roughly a loss of 17 parking She's spaces. Is that correct? Six. That's correct. Okay. So you stated that there was an additional loss of 49. How, how, where does the, the, I can understand where your calculation under a different zoning requirement may make it 49 more, but there's no loss of 49. Can you clarify that, please? Yes, could please come up to the podium. Thank you. Th through the mayor, may I, may I comment? Uh, uh, yeah. But before she answers your question, my perception of her comment was that she was making a case for the practical removal of the spaces as opposed to the actual physical per ordinance or per, per uh, our uh, standards removal of the spaces saying that if the 49 spaces in the garages are uh, designated virtue of basically to the highest to those willing to pay for them that in effect removes them from availability from the overall that I believe that am I capturing the meaning of why, your why don't you comment? come on up to the podium and, and make sure we understand Could, could you please come up to the podium? Thank you. Um, the code says that they're supposed to have one parking space, so they're not paying for that. Now you're asking them to pay for those 49 parking spaces, garages. Now, if they can't afford that or if they don't want to, then that's a loss. And um, where are they going to find those spaces? Carports. Where are they going to find, you know, if I can't afford that garage, I'm going to take up a... Um, a guest parking, and that just creates havoc all around. It's a very tight parking lot, I mean, uh, park, uh, complex all, all around. And then you have uh, uh, buildings inside without even a, a, um, a driveway or a, a road or a parking lot next to it. So it's, uh, it's very tight all around. Okay, thank you. So yeah, there isn't an actual loss of 49 no. spaces. It's just specula speculation based upon market demand. That's great. Okay, that's a, that's thank you. Way, way to put it. So away. it was my understanding, just for clarification too, that those uh, covered garages will be available for uh, people to purchase an additional amount for that extra storage and the covered security nature of a garage. But each unit will still have a, car a carport available for them. So they're not, to clarify, they're not losing out on that parking spot in a unit just because they don't have a garage. There's still a carport. Well, <clears throat> I, I'm not the applicant. A designated I, space. I'll yeah. kind of, I think, uh, speculate the best I understand of the applicant's proposal is the each tenant is assigned a parking space. And if you have the option tenants will have the option to elect to upgrade that space to a garage space if okay. they so seek. So a parking space is provided within the normal course of <clears throat> being a tenant. So you have the option of either having a, because we, there's more than enough covered parking spaces to meet the, the minimum one car per unit demand. So that's, that's inherent in the rental or you can upgrade to having more of like a prime parking space. I have a question. There's only 49. So is it, it is an upgrade. So if they upgrade, that space becomes available that they were first designated to. They can't well, have both spaces. Well, that's as, that's as I'm understanding it. And even because some, some of the tenant spaces um, could have, you know, the minimum for a two-bedroom requirement is 1.5 spaces. Mm -hmm. We're not expecting that they're renting 1.5 or two spaces. I, I, I believe the intent is that it's an option. 
did you hear that? No. So if someone um, pays extra for the garage, that space that they were designated becomes available. They cannot have both spaces. What? I'm sorry. You're, you're saying that it's, if they don't pay for that garage, that it's... Each person gets a designated space. And if they choose to pay, they don't? You're saying no? I don't no? think so. I was just trying to find what their proposed uh, parking. They have their number of um, uh, carports, um, and then they have garages. And if you take away those garages, I think you, you're, you're taking less. You're taking a lot less, the 49. Can I finish my thoughts? Council Member Helmer? Absolutely. Okay. No, oh, sorry. So my understanding is that you are assigned a space, okay? And then if you pay for the garage, that space that you were first assigned now becomes available. You cannot have two spaces. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. Council Member Helmer? Helmer? Are, are you a, a, a tenant at Serenity? No, I used to work there, though, uh, a long time ago, several times. Do, ten, do current uh, residents at Serenity for each unit have a designated parking space now? I'm sorry, do I have... have do I residents have... at the units at Serenity, for, per each, for each unit, is there a designated parking space now? I don't know. There should be. Mm -hmm. uh, it... Do you know the answer to that, Neil? The applicant has indicated that's the case, that every tenant has a dedicated space, and that in their traffic studies, when they did surveys, they found some tenants have more than one car, so they do use, and so it's... Beyond the one designated beyond space. Beyond the one it's, designated space. It's up for grabs. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you very much. Uh, so let's bring it back to the council for consideration. Does anybody have anything they'd like to say further? Mm, seeing none, uh, should we have a motion? I'll go ahead and make the motion to pass agenda item 4-4, the precise plan amendment and design review 1713, waive second reading, adopt ordinance number 1024, amending the precise development plan for the Lincoln Village residential development. Serenity at Larkspur Apartments. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Uh, so that brings us, I believe, to agenda item number uh, seven, uh, and specifically agenda item uh, 7.1, <laughs> consideration of resolution 7217, a resolution of the city council. Uh, finding the existence of violations of the municipal code at 45 Via Hermosa and adopting an administrative order confirming cost of nuisance abatement and authorizing the imposition of a nuisance abatement special assessment and lien for real property located at that site and imposing other appropriate remedies. If we could have a city manager's report. Actually, I'm going to allow city clerk. Uh, Jamie Krill is going to give the report. Great. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Mayor Harrell. Um, so this item is before council to discuss multiple violations of the Larkspur Municipal Code occurring at 45 Via Hermosa in Greenbrae and the process the code provides the city with um, to correct those violations. Marin Sanitary Service notified the city that due to non-payment, weekly residential solid waste collection service at 45 Via Hermosa was canceled and all waste containers had been removed from the property. This is a violation of the Larkspur Municipal Code which requires property owners occupants or tenants to dispose of solid waste through the city's designated agent, which is Marin Sanitary Service. Additionally, the city received complaints that solid waste from the property is being disposed of in residential containers throughout the neighborhood. This is also a violation of the municipal code, which precludes a person from depositing waste into a container without the permission of the container owner. The city sent two notices to the property owners that identified the multiple violations and required the property owners to correct the violations by a specified date. The property owner's failure to correct the identified violation constitutes a nuisance. Per code, the city initiated summary abatement proceedings by paying the outstanding balance to Marin Sanitary Service and restoring solid waste disposal service to the property. Additionally, per code, the city has the authority to charge the property owners for all costs associated with this process, 
Um, so today, staff is recommending that the City Council adopt Resolution 7217, authorizing the recovery of these costs, which um, have been identified in Exhibit A through a special assessment and lien on the property. Okay, thank you very much for that. Any questions for the City Clerk? Any on this side? No, no questions? Uh, well, with that, I think we'll bring it back uh, to the City Council uh, to see if we have a motion. Do you technically Maybe. need to open the public hearing? Oh, I'm sorry. I know we don't have anyone I, in the I, audience. I, I see no one out there <laughs> today. I, it skipped my mind. But I will open uh, this matter to uh, 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 statements by the public. If there is any member of the public who wishes to make a statement on this agenda item, uh, seeing none, I will then bring it back to the City Council for a motion. Oh yeah, no, please. I, just a question just came to me, Jamie. You mentioned two notices were sent to the property owner. Were they, um, I guess, certified so we know they received them? Yes. That's correct. Alrighty. Anything else? Right. I'll move to adopt resolution seventy-two seventeen. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The motion passes. Uh, agenda item number eight is business items. I see that we have none listed. Uh, so that brings us to agenda item number nine, which is to adjourn the meeting. Uh, and before I ask for a meeting of adjournment, I'd like to request that we adjourn in the memory of the victims of the uh, terror, terrible terrorist attack that occurred yesterday uh, in New York City. Uh, it's just another example of of uh, a level of violence in this country that has become almost intolerable and it's very uh, sad to see it. It's very sad to see it in a, the wonderful city of New York. Um, and I know all of our hearts go out to the, uh, the family members of the victims of that, uh, of that attack. So with that, can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.